Doing scribble drawings on a regular basis is a great way to improve your drawing skills. What you want to do is you want to start by creating your first item in the drawing. Just do a light scribble and then make sure you get the form and the shape correct. Once you do that, you can start working on the next object and the size of that will be based on your original drawing, in this case, the pear. So I'm now working on the bowl and I'm doing some of the details and I'm doing them slightly darker just so that I'll be able to see the difference between the leaves and the bowl uh, when I come back and start working on my values. Now that I have the rough shape of the bowl out, I'm going to start doing the fruit. So I started with the lemon and now I'm working on the limes and I'm just putting enough detail so that I can see the difference between each piece of fruit and they don't all just blend into one. I will be coming back at the end and working on values so that you can discern each element on its own. I'm now going in and putting a rough shape for the vase for the plants. So I'm going to go back and do the plants after. So I'm going back now that I've established my, my image and I'm working on the pair and I am now starting to build up the values to, to try and create the form, the shape of the pair. So I am looking at it and you want to make sure um, that you get the elements separated from each other by going with the different values. Because it's scribbling, you don't want it all blending into one or looking too busy. The advantage of using a scribble drawing is it gives your, your image excitement. It's got some movement to it. So as you see, as I'm filling in, I'm doing the curves and I'm working them darker. And I'm not doing straight lines. I'm not shading it in. It's all done with the scribbles, but I have to put them and layer them so that you can see the depth of the pair. So now that I look at it, okay, I'm going to move on. I just want to make sure that I get the darkness. So the separation where the pair is sitting on the table and now I'm going to go start working on the next element which is the bowl. So I'm just making sure I have a nice even background there and then I will go in and work the details. So I'm doing scribbles and I'm just working them across now because if you look at the reference photo, there are some subtle lines. So I'm putting the lines across before I actually get all my shading in because I don't want them to stand out afterwards because they don't in the image, but I do want the detail. I'm working on the foot of the bowl right now and just getting it darker because you can see the elements are darker down there. So I will go with the darkness and then work my way up. Because as you keep building it, you're going to notice you will have to keep going back and adding more. Because every time I darken something, whatever is next to it will start to appear lighter. So I'm now going and I'm working in, you'll notice there's like bands across the bowl. So I'm going over those lines that I created. And then once I've done that, you'll notice that the leaf wasn't showing up. So I have to go back in and I have to darken the leaf and then the other leaves because they're all the images. And if I don't do this, then it's just going to get messy and they're going to get lost. Now I'm doing all of this and I'm still doing it with scribbles the whole time it's scribbling. But I have to go back and do the edge of the pear and make it a little bit darker because I need it to stand out from the bowl. 
So this is exactly what I was explaining earlier, that you have to keep going back and adding some detail and adding it to make it darker so that the images will take the right form and be able to stand away from each other. So I'm working on the lime right now. And right now it's a big blob, so I'm trying to get the different values so that it starts to become rounded and starts to look more like a line. Take your time and make sure that you actually have all the elements, the correct shape, look for the lighting, look for the shadows, you want to make sure that you have all those elements and that each element is separate from the elements next to it. Now I have sped up my drawing considerably to shorten it because this was done over a long period. But as you notice, as I go through, I keep going back. So right now I'm putting in the detail for the planter or the vase. And I'm just trying to get some subtle detail in there because it's not going to be very dark at the end, but I still do have to darken so that you can get the shapes, the grooves. So as I've gone and I've given the initial layer, I'm then building it up doing more layers on top of it. I'm starting now just to add some of the plant. So the plant has to be darker than the, than the planter. So I'm going in with it a fair bit darker and then I'm going to start working my way up. So I'm doing the elements on the planter fairly dark because I need them to stand out from the background. And then I'm going in and giving an overall shape for the plant and I've done it lightly and I'm making sure the elements that I did on the planter are linked to the plant above. And as you'll notice, there's the blue flowers in the reference photo. Well, I'm not using color. So what I'm doing is I am scribbling the negative space around my flowers to create the flowers so they are lighter than the actual plant. So now I'm just paying attention to my reference because obviously I'm not going to recreate the plant exactly with my scribbles, but I want you to get the feel of the plant, see where the lights and shadows are and have the little extra strands sticking out. So I'm pleased with how it's worked. So now I'm just going down and I'm trying to give a little bit of detail for the lace tablecloth. I'm just scribbling parts of the pattern and then doing an overall very light scribble because I do need the contrast from the bowl and the pear and the tablecloth because if everything's the same value, it's all going to get lost. So you really do need to see from your lightest to your darkest and all the stages in between. So I'm looking at everything. And I'm just going back and adding where I think it needs a little bit more uh, darkness so that it stands out from its surroundings. Be sure when you go back in and add your details that you do not outline any of the elements. I'm going back and I'm working on all the various elements, just making sure that you can see each element as an individual, but everything blends nicely together. So now where I'm almost finished, I have to pay attention and I have to make sure that the highlights are showing and that the shadows are showing because that's what's going to give the shape, the depth of each element. 
and you see at the bottom of the lines it's very dark because it has to be able to stand out from the edge of the bowl. Okay, I've decided I'm going to try and put a little bit of a background. So I'm putting a little bit of detail. It kind of looks like a marbled background. And then I put light scribbling and I went the opposite direction of the scribbles I did for the table just to make the movement work right around the image. So your eye is drawn from the bottom to the bowl up and back again. So now I'm looking at it um, and I'm just checking to see if there's anything else I need to add or need to change. I want to make sure that every element is separated from each other. What I recommend is whenever you are doing a drawing or even if it's just an exercise, that when you're finished, you get up and take a break, come back and have a look and see if there's anything else you want to do or you think you need to do to change it. There's a fair amount of light reflecting on my picture, so I'll lift it up, have a look, see if there's anything I have to change, lift it up, check it again. And that's a great way to see the final result is just to angle it away from the light so you can see the true depth of the values. Now that I've lifted it up, you can really see the shadows and the highlights. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more of my videos. Be sure to ring the bell if you'd like to get notifications when I post new videos. Thank you for watching.